Everyone has at least one memory, the kind where everything about the experience was horrible, but to this day, it puts a smile on your face every time you think about it. It's an odd thing, our mind. In the moment, it can be telling us we are at the end of our existence, and then years later reminding us of the hilarity and euphoria of overcoming something terribly difficult. This route is one of those for us, a 62 kilometer route traversing the continental divide, spanning multiple glaciers and climbing 2300 meters of elevation. It's called the Bo Yoho Traverse. Right now you're watching us have a leisurely lunch break at an old university research station. It's a convenient stop on the way to the northernmost tip of the Wapta ice field. But see that little toe over there? That's the Pato Glacier. Like the forehead of an old man hidden under a wool toque, it's filled with crevasses and chasms that are hidden under a deep, soft blanket of snow. As soft, small, and easily passable as it looks from here, there is grave potential danger lying underneath. And our altitude gain by the end of this day alone will be double that of the Empire State Building. Needless to say, this trip is a dangerous one. There's a big plus about our trip this time. Our last trip across was during a streak of minus 45 degrees Celsius. To give you some context, we were moderately warm while moving, but when we stopped on the Yoho Glacier for lunch, we only lasted about a minute and a half before we started shivering, down jackets and all. Immediately back on our skis, we ate as we hoofed along, consuming our frozen protein bars like two shivering German shepherds gnawing on a bone. But let's get on with today's story. It might even go a hair to the right, but either way, straight out the road will get us there. joys of skiing in ultra warm weather. What you see here, yeehaw, always is fun to do when you've got your heel free. Only one way to get good at it. And that's the giver. Beautiful day. I'd say it's probably right around freezing, if that. But altitude, I think the highest would be about minus five, low about minus 15 Celsius, which is really moderate and mild. As soon as we get out of these trees down to the lake, then it's straight shooting. The snow takes all of the up and down out of it. So it's just a nice gentle, like walking down a sidewalk. Maybe the sidewalk has a much better view. Well, we finally reached the lake. That was more work than it should have been. snow than I expected. We are at the choke. I'm going to skirt up the side a little bit to avoid the uh, rocks. Crazy. Yeah, I wonder if we should just walk or... Yeah, let's do it. The creek looks, looks mostly open, so might as well.
and I think I know it's digging into my leg. It's doing it on my right this time. It's how I tie around my ankle with the extra, um, yeah. I think up here I'm gonna just undo it enough I can get my, uh, well, this time it's on my right side. Up that moraine, over the hump, up there you can see that rock face, the hut's just on the other side of that. Still another four or five K I think, but we'll know when we get there. Sometimes you get lucky enough to find a skin track. Although with this compacted snow, you can almost go anywhere without any issues. But at least we know we're on making the same bad decisions as someone else. Sometimes that's enough to get you through the day. We're gonna cross that moraine, I think just inside of it, and then crest up over top into the clouds. Probably stop and grab lunch soon too. Pretty well worn trail here. Here, there's an avalanche slide path. So at this point, we're spreading out a little just in case something gets triggered. The others are free to go and dig you out if you get buried. You can see them behind me. It's gotten really warm. It's gotta be at least five of them. In this little hidden spot, there's no wind, and I have to shed away. Beautiful day. down below on the right side of the street. Whew. There's a weather glacier monitoring station, I think by the U of A. A frame cabin, not even really, less than a garden shed. And a bunch of equipment. I'll show you that in a minute. As soon as I catch my breath. Uh, research station there. I believe most of the time it's unmanned. Someone probably checks it one day a year or even nowadays it's probably all updated over satellite.
Well, the wind picked up. We really took the fun out of sitting and enjoying our food. So we're on the, on the go again. You can see the wind has been really, really, really bad hairdresser today. But at this point, who do I have? Except all you guys. Ooh, do we tiptoe or do we take off the skis? I think I'm gonna tiptoe. This is not good for your skins. Do not do what I do. I can see a lot of people have done it too. But either way, don't do this. Oh man, feels so bad. But feels less bad than stopping to take off my skis and put them back on again. Oh, look at that. All better. It's like that didn't even happen. I won't tell anybody if you don't. Well, this wind takes a lot of the fun out. I don't even know if you can hear me. It's livable. All the fun I make of split borders and how long they take, that probably made it all over it. This pain and suffering of having the board and deep board. Well, we're getting real close. Just about to get onto the glacier. I see some of the crevasses covered in snow. This is the point where we rope up. I have to So we'll probably see you on the other side when we get to the hut. Well, probably half a kilometer from the hut. It's been pretty decent. Good weather, it's a little bit of a stiff wind. These conditions are amazing. Uh, downhill, it's not much fun here. Where we're coming down on the other side, it's gonna be a lot warmer. So hopefully the snow will be a little bit soft and mushy, slushy like you're skiing in the west coast. Anyway, we'll see you at the top.
That's what I call a room with a view. Yeah. <laughs> 